Welcome to Cherishing Scripture Podcast. Brad Bailey here with you. Also in the room with us is good old Jeremy Boggs to my left, doing a great job here studying, preparing, getting us ready. And behind the booth on the sound system, Zachary Taylor, not the famous president, just the youth director at Brandon Baptist Tabernacle. (laughs) That's right. And uh, doing a fine job at all of that. Could be president if he wanted to, if he (laughs) wanted was willing to give up his ministry career, he could probably take a swing at it at least. But you've told me all politicians are liars, so are yeah, you, they are. The are you insinuating that? That's exactly right. <laughs> okay. So anyway, it's great to be here, and it's great to have you guys with us, all of you who listen and like and subscribe. You're especially appreciated. Uh, we are back in Galatians chapter number five. We were just talking off the air here about how we're ending. We're getting close to the end of this book. It's been yeah. an exciting run. And uh, we've enjoyed it. A lot of podcasts are negative and critical and so on and so forth. And we try to keep ours as thoroughly biblical as possible. Once in a while, it kind of crosses over into that uh, because we're dealing with something like we will be today, you know, with some of the things that sort of address some of the modern trends that are going on. And so we have that we have that propensity once in a while to uh, kind of get into the controversial. But we want to be edifying to the listener. That's our genuine hope and our genuine desire. We believe God's Word's helping us, and we just believe if it helps us, it'll help you too as a listener. So uh, hang in there with us here for the podcast. Hey, guys, I want to make a couple of announcements. Is that okay before we start? Yeah, yeah go ahead. Uh, I was just looking at our calendar here, and in the church, we have a couple of exciting days coming up. Uh, first of all, in August, uh, we would love to have you come and visit with us on August the 29th. That's a Sunday, both services. We have Jonathan Davis and Breaking Ground. They're going to be Mm -hmm. here ministering in music, and Jonathan's going to be preaching. Of course, Jonathan is the son of my dear, dear friend who is in heaven now, Dr. Lee Davis, wonderful, wonderful man of God. And uh, Jonathan is no slouch himself. He is a good guy. And uh, they'll be coming down from Atlanta. That'll be an exciting day, August 29th, Sunday school at 10, worship service at 11, evening service at 6. And Brother Davis and his family will be ministering probably in all three of those. Sweet. So we'll wait and see how exactly how that goes. But uh, Breaking Ground, Bluegrass Music, you'll love it. Uh, Jonathan and his precious wife, their children, they all sing together. You know, Breaking Ground kind of has a little bit of a history. They used to have several guys that were together in that group. And uh, then when Jonathan moved to Atlanta, things kind of started – you know, getting difficult for him to get together and practice and so on and so forth. So now it's mostly just him and his family, and mm-hmm. they're doing a phenomenal job. I mean, they're really, really doing a great job. So Breaking I, Ground, August 29th, be I with us I think the that. first time I heard them was uh, at the old camp meetings from the church you came from yeah, in Georgia. Sang, yeah, Victory Baptist Church, my, my home church. They've sung up there, I can't remember how many times. Yeah, lots of times. they were great. And I'm going to tell you something. Don't ever forget, Jonathan is a, an amazing songwriter. Yeah, He has written some of the grace, greatest music recently that uh, – that I've heard, so you won't want to miss that. And then uh, October the 3rd, we have Dr. Phil Stringer, old friend of mine. He's going to be here preaching for us. I'm excited about that day as well. We'll talk more about that when the time comes closer. And we're constantly hosting missionaries and stuff. So if you're looking for an exciting church, a church that's keeping the calendar full and keeping people coming in, continuing to support missions, having services, all of those types of things, we would be delighted to have you come visit with us here at Brandon Baptist Tabernacle, which, by the way, we had a lot of visitors this morning. Yes, we did. I don't know how many. Uh, we have to get with our usher, our chief usher, and find out. But uh, had a great deal of visitors with us this morning. It was gr- quite a blessing. So uh, so back to Galatians chapter number 5. And I guess if I'm introing this thing, I'm probably going to be responsible for telling exactly what we're going to be studying today. We've been breaking down the fruit of the Spirit which has followed the works of the flesh earlier in the chapter here. Let me scroll up on my trusty Lenovo computer. And uh, works of the flesh, among the works of the flesh were seditions and heresies and envies and murders and drunkenness and things like that. So he puts these two lists side by side. I don't think that's an accident. The works of the flesh juxtaposed right up alongside of the fruit of the Spirit. And uh, we have discussed the uh, the fact. Uh, that, well, my suggestion was that um, the fruit of the spirit and other lists like that in the Bible are d- the description of a Christian life, mm-hmm. not just uh, a day or two, but the span of a Christian life. And right. so, I'm of the persuasion that lists like this. There's nine words here. 
and I'm of the persuasion they cover the gamut of the Christian life, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. So what we have decided to do, excuse me, is take those three at a time. Uh, We began in verse 22 a couple of weeks ago, and we talked about love, joy, and peace. So today's subject matter is going to be long-suffering, gentleness, goodness. Mm -hmm. Uh, It'll be followed by faith, meekness, and temperance. But long-suffering, gentleness, and goodness is our subject matter for today. Uh, I love the depiction of the Holy Spirit in the Bible. Yeah, Uh, We read about Jesus. We're talking about the Lamb of God, a very gentle animal. And when we talk about the Holy Spirit, it's a dove. Mm. And I can't think of two more gentle personalities than a lamb and a dove. And so that's a, an excellent way for us to look at these three. The Spirit of God produces long suffering, gentleness, and goodness. So, what's your thoughts, guys? Yeah, uh, long suffering is not a new subject for Paul. I mean, in 1 Corinthians 13, he said that uh, charity suffers long. So, he. And it's kind. I, I've been doing. Uh, exactly right. Reading through a lot of Paul's books lately, especially my devotions those really short ones that are like five or six chapters long and i keep now finding he constantly he doesn't just talk about the fruits of the spirits in galatians but he's he spreads it out through all of his other books that's right and when he talks about love one thing that stood out to me this week was i was reading in uh philippians where he said that he was ready to go home he was ready to die he was tired of the flesh but because the brethren needed him he was willing to stay he was willing to because he loved them and he was he was uh, going to continue to be patient with them, long suffering, uh, and goodness to them, and he had joy in them. Um, so it's he he continues the subject constantly throughout the whole entire all of his other books. I you agree. just see love, you just see joy, you see peace. Um, so he uh, this is Paul is worthy to talk about this. Yeah, he knows what he's doing. It's kind of a classical Paul, right? Ta- always talking about love, always talking about these fruits of the spirit, and so many other contexts. Um, you know, one of the things that surprised me was his emphasis on love in the church at Thessalonica. Yeah. I mean, he really told that church he loves them in multiple different ways. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think that today, you know, the church needs to know that we love it. Um, and, I, and I don't think that can just be verbalized. I think that needs to be proven. Uh, let, uh, let, your, um, uh, let your love not just be in word only, but in deed and in truth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I think that uh, when he's talking about this context of love, joy, peace, uh, those things manifest themselves and sort of come out in the next dimension uh, in long-suffering. Um, the word that I'm seeing here is the word longanimity, uh, forbearance, fortitude. So it's talking about having what it takes to go the distance, having what it takes to stay the course. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're in this new phase of Christianity today where there's just so many that are bailing out early yeah quitting way too soon and um, that's not that's not the long suffering that he's describing here and it's really yeah. like a really bad time for people to start not being long suffering and, and leaving the faith so soon yeah. uh, last night uh, me Zach and uh, Jackie and Anna were talking about um, the you know the end times and how things are going to get worse and Jesus said to in Matthew that um, there's going to be false Christ. There are going to be false, um, going to be false teachers who are going to do signs and wonders. And even if it was possible, um, deceive it would deceive elect. the very elect. Yeah. And 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 we need the brethren to stay together um, and be long suffering together because when that time comes, yeah. um, what a battle! Yeah, what a battle! I, and when I look up the word here, it has uh, two words in the original text. The first one means long. The second one means passion or anger. So the word literally means having a long passion or a sufficient time before expressing anger. Um, This avoids the premature use of force that rises out of an improper anger, which Pastor mentioned earlier is a perfect example of the Holy Spirit and and God in his relationship to us being long-suffering, being patient, uh, not acting prematurely. Yeah. Uh, but it's truthfully something as a, I, and I say this as a church as a whole, uh, I think as a community or Christians, we struggle with being long-suffering towards people. Um, we easily write people off. Um, 
It's easier to write someone off than to take the time and the patience to love them and understand there's going to be ups and downs, but just sticking with them through it. Um, yeah. Because that's the temptation with me, especially dealing with young people. When I deal with a young person that is struggling with a certain something and, and they just keep going back to it time and time and time again. Mm-hmm. And it seems like every time you try to help them, they keep coming back. Uh, what I've had to realize is that I'm not going to change everyone. Um, I'm not foolish enough to believe that I could. Right. But that doesn't mean that we don't try to help as many people as we can, if yeah, that sure. makes sense at all. And don't that's what, give up easy. And I, I think the thing is, is it's like I said, you know, because there's, there's an emotional tie to it. Truthfully, it would be a lot easier to write off even Jeremy. It'd be easier for me to write off Jeremy than try to deal with the struggles that he's going to deal with. Right. And I use Jeremy because him and I are such good friends, but that's really how it is with anyone. I mean, it's just so much easier to write someone off than it is to actually take the time to love them mm-hmm. and, and direct them to God. Yeah, when you say write somebody off, and we're talking about breaking fellowship, right? You know, and that that's not something that's to be done hastily. Right. You know? When you break fellowship with someone, you're you're you know what is a talk, the scripture talks about after the first and second admonition, then reject. But it gives no timeline on what those first and second admonitions are to look like, you know. So I think every case is different. Um, when someone is is um, uh, is showing um, signs of of something that disturbs us, or something that agitates us, or something that frustrates us, that's where long suffering comes into the picture. It's easy to be long suffering with someone you agree with. So right. this is one of those fruits of the spirit that rises when there's a disagreement. Long suffering is not activated until there's some kind of a disagreement. Mm. Yeah. So, it's a good word. So the second word, gentleness, mercy, how many need this? This yeah. is this is and it goes along with long suffering. Um, you know, there's there's people in our church right now, you know, as a pastor here, I I uh I just want to bite their head off all the way down to their ankles, you know. Um we've got we've got different conditions and different things that exist, you know, frustrating things, but Gentleness is without question. You know, it's it's called for today. We uh, uh, we need it more desperately, I guess, now than ever. You know, because and and you know, kind of before we move right on into gentleness, you, know, you were talking about dealing with teenagers and stuff like that. Um, you know, I I really have a hard time with quitters. Mm. You know, which is the antithesis of being long suffering. Um, you know, if they if they're just Easy to quit, easy to throw in the towel, easy to give up. Um, they're not going to find, a, you know, as good a friend with me as they normally would. That's probably a problem I should address, a personal issue of my own. Uh, and uh, and it sort of lends itself to the gentleness discussion, you know, being gentle with people, gentle with their emotions, gentle with their needs. Again, First Thessalonians talks about, uh, what is that, comfort the feeble-minded. Yeah. Uh, weep with those who weep, rejoice with those who rejoice. So there's gentleness that's very, very needful uh, yeah. in today's world for sure. And I want to ask because um, I'm curious, and I know usually oftentimes you know, you've always been told in class if you have a question, oftentimes other people will. Where do you, How do you find the line between being gentle with someone uh, you were mentioning, for example, with you, I, I struggle with the same thing of writing someone off. Where do you find the balance between uh, getting aggravated with someone who quits uh, and actually standing up and saying, okay, enough's enough? Right. I don't know. Yeah, if that... yeah I, I think every case is different. Um, but at the same time, you know, I try to be, I think one of the words here that could be substituted for generalness is considerate. And I try to be considerate of whatever legitimate excuses a person may have for not doing something or not performing the way they should perform or not rising to the level that they should come to. Um, when those excuses run out and it's just straight up laziness or straight up you know, irresponsibility, that's where my gentleness is really tested most. Um, I, believe it or not, by nature, I tend to be a gentle person. You know, a lot of people, I come across, I think, a little different than that with most people. Um, but I genuinely want to be as accommodating and as considerate as I possibly can mm. with people. Um, 
but even me, man, sometimes my patience just wears out. Yeah. You know, and I just I lose it. I lose my ability to to be considerate of someone else. And uh, there's been many times I've had to go back to people and apologize. That's the thing about a lot of these things, you know. Um, if you're not going to do this, you just need to be ready to be an apologetic person all the time. You know, mm-hmm. constantly having to, you know, go back and fix something that you said, fix something that you did. You know, you blew up or whatever. Constantly having to do that. So gentleness eliminates the need for apologies. Mm-hmm. The word is kind of interesting, though, because uh, its first application is called usefulness. Yeah. That's that's an interesting application for that word. Um, but then it goes on to explain it's morally useful. Um, and so the the idea here is that you are um, you're doing this on on the for the higher ground uh, for the higher taking the higher road you're being gentle when someone else is being you know it's kind of like the proverbs it says a soft answer turneth away wrath so uh it's a useful virtue if it is used correctly in the and under the anointing of the holy spirit um in character and demeanor being gentle but one of the words that is translated is goodness, and the other one is kindness. Here it's gentleness, but in other passages it's called goodness and kindness. Mm-hmm. And so this is definitely a fruit of the Spirit. This is, uh, I would um, observe that this is a fruit of the Spirit that a lot of preachers need to be more experienced with mm, yeah. uh, because they're not gentle when they preach. They're not gentle when they minister. In some cases, they're just downright bullish, forceful, you know, violent yeah. almost. Yeah. The definition I see here that I, I feel like really fits, it says meeting real needs in God's ways and his timing. Yeah, I would agree with and that. And that's really what Jonah says. And, you know, we've <laughs> talked about this before, Pastor. The temptation when you get up there to preach or to teach or whatever it is, it's easy when you know issues going on to just go up there and, drop the axe and I truthfully I, I've heard you tell you know stories of people going in and saying they don't know what they're going to preach until they see the crowd that's and, crazy and it's like that is the complete yeah. opposite of what it means to be gentle well yeah. it just means you're in control of the of the message you're not letting the Bible or the Holy Ghost control the message you just you're doing what you want right and, you know but uh, yeah I'm, I'm being truthful when I tell you this there's guys I've got a guy right now in our church that I'm just being honest I just want to cut him right to the bone mm. you know he has been so irresponsible and he has been so uh, such a malicious gossip and all of it has gotten back to me and and it just it infuriates me yeah you know but gentleness makes me look at his wife and say okay you know but i i don't want to i don't want to you know cut this guy's head off right i want to be considerate of his wife and his children and other things too. So there's a lot of factors when it comes to gentleness. You know, you don't just, uh, there's a difference between a shepherd and a butcher. Mm-hmm. You know, a butcher's going to maim and kill and cut and bleed, but a, uh, a shepherd is going to have a healing ministry, a medicinal ministry. Yeah. It's part of the gentleness description, I think. Yeah, that's good. So long suffering gentleness. You guys good with that one? Yeah, those are great. Last one here is goodness. I love this word. Uh, this word comes up often in the Bible. A lot of people just uh, overlook it because it's such a commonly used word. Um, it is the it's it's a word that means beneficence. It is translated goodness always in the Bible, and uh, I love the word because there are numerous places where this word is used to describe certain things. This is kind of one of those modifier words. Uh, for example, uh, uh, First Corinthians, no, Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, this is, you, you present your bodies a, a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So the word good there is referring to beneficence. It's referring to, um, uh, it's it's literally talking, to, I think it's like a utilitarian term. You got to do what is good. Good for the family, good for the church, good for the ministry, good for the business. Um, that's kind of where this comes from. And it, it is a, it outflows from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is going to lead you to do what is beneficial. He is not going to lead you to do what is destructive to the church, destructive to your home, 
destructive to your own person. He's going to lead you to do what is good. Yeah. yeah. And like you said, I think it's important to understand that this is from, this comes from God. It's kind of like uh, we've talked about before. It's God pours into you, and then the effects of God pouring into you causes an overflowing nature, which allows you to affect others in both a spiritual, you know, and moral, even a moral sense of how you behave yourself in this goodness. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's an incredible word, really, really good word. So we've got these. We're narrowing it down now. We have uh, love. I have six now. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, goodness, excuse me, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness. And and going back again to our discussion, um, you could look at this in light of we're two-thirds through the Christian life now uh, because uh, if faith, meekness, and temperance is the closing of the Christian life, then we're right in the middle of those uh, years of maturity. Uh, long suffering, I think, is a real landmark. Yeah. Because if you're a new convert, what do you know about long suffering? Mm. You know, you, you've only been saved six months. I mean, what do you know about faithfulness and long suffering? Yeah. So we have a, a really good um, threshold here that we've crossed today. Yeah, I've only been saved five years, and I still, I, I don't even think I'm not even close to being able to yeah. be long suffering. Five years, I'm telling you, five <laughs> years is a really, really good accomplishment. A really good start because you know quite frankly i know people that you know have been saved just a handful of months or maybe a year mm-hmm. and and they just they bail mm-hmm. you know which i am doubtful that they ever truly got born again to begin with yeah but uh i'm, I'm a i'm a big fan of the philosophy you know we should count our converts five years later yeah uh, if they hang in there five years that's that's a landmark yeah that's yeah. good so we got a good start here on this second section long suffering gentleness and goodness next time we will take in faith meekness and temperance and then hopefully have an opportunity to discuss this closing phrase here against such there is no law so you've been listening to the cherishing scripture podcast we really appreciate it when you visit us on the youtube channel that's my favorite uh, place to get these podcasts like we get we by the way we do get these faithfully every week yeah Brother Jeremy is the one who edits these, puts them all together, puts some graphics with it, puts it on YouTube for us. I'm glad you guys are doing this stuff because I have absolutely no idea how to do that. Uh, So YouTube is a huge platform. You can get the Cherishing Scripture podcast. The other ones are there as well. You can search for them online, your uh, mobile device, and uh, you can subscribe to them. Please do so. Ring the bell if you're on YouTube. And uh, we want to get you notifications on what's coming up. The verse of the week is also a new feature Mm -hmm. or one of the features of our podcasting ministry. Uh, Very encouraging word with some beautiful graphics there behind it as well. So check all those things out. If you want to visit the church, we'd be delighted to have you. We're getting ready to start a new program this coming school year where we're going to be ministering to a lot of neighborhood children, neighborhood kids. So um, if you're interested in that, you can reach out to us, info at brandonbaptisttabernacle.com. That's the email address, info at brandonbaptisttabernacle.com. The website has all those hundreds and hundreds of sermons. If you want those, they're available, uh, free to download. Take advantage today. So Cherishing Scripture Podcast, thanks, guys, for your help. Join us again next time.